Commission. The legal redress. 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 This is how we do it. <laughs> you are a fool. You are an idiot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to do the little mix a little bit different. We're going to add a little bit of uh, Teddy Pendergrass, a little bit of Marvin Gaye, and we're going to bring in some other artists which I haven't played. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a call coming in from New York, a gentleman that I told to call me, so I'm going to have to pause y'all for a second. Be one moment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I had to take that 45-minute telephone call. But there was a reason why we took that 45 minutes. Got to put our music back on because I, I need my boy Teddy letting you all know about us the latest and greatest inspiration. Because I woke up this morning and I decided that we're not just going after one bank. We're not just going after two banks. Guess how many banks we're going after? Well, we're going to take our cue from the guy who filed the lien against the Federal Reserve and the United States Treasury. That's right. We're going to take our cue from him. By filing a lien against the United States Federal Reserve, he was, in effect, filing it against all of the banks in the United States. Ain't that something else? So, we have to go after Big Papa and Big Mama. And that's what we're going to do. What, you telling people you're going to do that? And aren't you going to be bringing trouble up on yourself? They're not going to let you do that. They're going to be blah, 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 Shut it up. Just shut it up. Martin Lawrence and Gina. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that you all... Get the picture. We are going to do what nobody else is willing to do. Not because they are afraid. No, yes, they are afraid. Half the people I brought this to their attention, they were all afraid. But remember, I'm the guy who filed a lawsuit against the United States Postal Service and Small Claims Court. Well, you can't file a lawsuit against the United States Postal Service. That's a government agency. You got to sue them in federal court. Not one person stepped up and said, Your Honor, this belongs in federal court. Now, they did do a notice of removal to federal court as the defendants, but never did they say that because of this and because of that and because we're a federal agency, it has to be in a federal court. Their argument was is that the arguments presented was better handled on the federal level. I started to refile the suit all over again and keep it in the state court, saying that this is a state action, the other one is a federal action, and both are allowed. I started to do that. I started to play with them that way, but it was no reason. I was only trying to emphasize to everybody that you can file against these corporations in small claims court. Now, I am not the greatest. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I am the greatest okay that's why I like Muhammad Ali because none of you not a single person on this planet could have taken that man's confidence away no nobody they tried to take his confidence away put him in jail trying to beat him down and they were not capable people I was in SMU Supermax unit I was not only in SMU 1, I was in SMU 2 and caused so much problems for them that eventually they had to kick me out of the facility. 
Yes, I just told somebody tonight that I am the only person I know that that would happen to. So I promised. Go, Jennifer. Go. Keep going. I'm sorry, I'm gesturing and she thinks I'm playing with her, so she's chasing my hands. All right. Got some enthusiasm tonight. All right. Um, I was just telling that person that I caused them so many problems that they kicked me out. And only I could do that to them. So, oh, this is uh, Teddy Pendergrass, a live version of the song. A remake. And I think the remake, all of the songs with Teddy Pendergrass and Marvin Gaye, you're going to hear throughout the, the next couple of videos, they're all remakes of their classics. Okay, this is by John Wilton and Geoff. Uh oh, come on, come on, give me back the rest of it. It's called Ghost of a Chance. Wait, we're gonna play that one later. I want this song right here. This, after Thursday, will be the song on the Legal Redress Commission. I like this song. So this song is going to play. Going to have no more shuffle. Midnight, firelight, I just like it. Ghost? No, this is a... Uh, I Know How You Feel or something like that. See, what is it called? I Know How You Feel. And... I'm waiting for their names to come up. The same guys. John Welton and Jeff Dones or Dwounds or however you pronounce his name. Sorry, young man. Pronounced your name all wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing another document. We're going to be doing a document that I think will bring the whole granter's assertion of rights to its conclusion, to its finite conclusion. This document is going to be called oh I don't want that stupid backup thing I'm about to get rid of that junk a uh, Dell it's a Dell computer and the guy who put together the computer put that junk together I'm gonna have to stop talking for a second so I can um, put this in here so you'll see the new title of the new document declaration of providence Decree of Entitlements. All caps that. Sorry about that, people. My mouse is very sensitive. Very, very sensitive. I don't know why it's so sensitive. I, I sat up there and called it a mini mouse and it stopped working the other day I mean just that sensitive just too sensitive alright this is Microsoft 2010 2013 gave me some headaches but ladies and gentlemen this is gonna be very similar to the declaration of executorship however it's gonna be a declaration of providence and decree of entitlements so let's make it A and D. Okay. This is going to throw people for a loop. Why? Because it's still a declaration of state. Okay. It's still an act of state. It's still an act of providence. It's not a declaration of rights. We don't want people to know that we have rights. Because we don't have any rights. Our estates have rights. Our trust have rights. Our legal name have rights. Our straw persons have rights. But we have entitlements. And the only person who's going to recognize your entitlements is you. So now you're going to declare and you're going to issue decrees. Because that's what a... Now I don't like this word. Y'all know I don't like this word. Don't use this word all the time. But that's what a sovereign does. He decrees. He dictates. He states what is. He knows what the definition of is is. 
because it's his job to know okay this document when I get finished will not be repetitive will not say the same things over and over again will be less than four pages that's my goal you will get it notarized and if the notary your notarized document is refused to be filed on the county record you will go to the district court in your area and you will file the dissolution of trust document that is on our uh, site and you will file this as an addendum it is only forty five dollars to file that some of you are going to want to be real cheap and file it but I'm going to suggest that you don't be real cheap now let's talk about the mass action lawsuit so that many of you understand what's going on the legal redress commission has been set up as a 98 series trust forward slash estate this estate is a non corporate or unincorporated corporation and it has solely been set up to protect the needs and issues of the sentient self-aware conscious human population of the earth land sea and world okay everyone who decides that they want to be a part of this lawsuit and it doesn't matter if it's Bank of America Wells Fargo JP Morgan uh, Aquafish or Aquaframe or Aqua this or Aqua that doesn't matter if it's a servicer if it's a bank it does not matter if your home was foreclosed on 10 years ago your issues will be introduced into this suit now as we're telling you all we're bringing it under the group under the organization so we think it's best that we show you why and how so give me a moment okay y'all just don't y'all don't understand y'all worse than parents alright we're gonna go downtown and we're gonna type in laws that and with just those two words we're gonna pull up laws you didn't know about now I could have gone through my recent but that was on the last computer and I'm doing it on a different computer that's why you see the setup is a little bit different no that was oh by the way Puerto Rico fee waiver let me explain to you this was the Mitsubishi Montero just got that running and the Lattice Police Department these are the two lawsuits I was filing against those idiots. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Let's go back to those two lawsuits so I can recall what I was going to say. Uh, no, because this is not laws you didn't know about. The Lattice Police Department, Mitsubishi Montero. Nope, wasn't about those either. Give me one second to type in you and hopefully that'll come to me oh there it is this is one of them this is not the one but this is one of them oh I know what I was going to talk about the Laris Police Department the fact that they dropped the so-called charges first I never accepted the charges they never even called my name for me to come forward I never even had a chance to say who are you people I don't know you and I'm in Puerto Rico everybody the court speaks Spanish so you know what I get to say the next time they give me a ticket? I don't understand. They bring a translator, excuse me? Are you, wait, is he speaking in legalese or is he speaking in Spanish? Because if you're gonna translate, you're gonna have to translate directly in the language he's talking from. And I can't tell whether he's speaking Spanish legalese or if he's speaking in plain Spanish or if you're translating in regular English or if you're translating in plain legalese. So we need to get this understanding before we can go any further. That's going to be the conversation. And you and I both know that they are not going to be able to handle that conversation because it's too deep. Okay? The fiduciaries can't handle it. You know why they can't handle it? Because they'll do exactly what they did. Dismiss the case because apparently the translator didn't show up. There are sometimes called rebuttable presumptions to distinguish them from absolute, conclusive, or irrebuttable presumptions in which rules of law and logic dictate that there is no possible way the presumption can be dissolved. Ladies and gentlemen, this is by providence. 
guaranteed because this is the premise of the lawsuit. We're bringing forth presumptions of law which, based on its logic, it is impossible for it to be disproved. See, we're going to, if a fact is absolute, is it, it is not truly a presumption at all, but a certainty. We're bringing forth arguments that have already been decided by the court. Interesting, ain't it? So that they can't say, fail to state a claim by which relief may be granted. No, sorry. In this case, in this very same year, the court decided blah, 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 blah. Okay? By the way, the unauthorized pact practice of law, we won't be dealing with that. But the practice of law is an occupation of common right. You see, basically, the, they didn't say that in Sims versus Aaron's. But what they did say is that the court cannot license or state cannot license the practice of law and this was in the Supreme Court in Schwer versus the Board of Examiners which is a New Mexico state case and I love the fact that I was in New Mexico with that because never well an attorney tried to tell you know said I was practicing law and I'll tell all of you I just had a conversation with someone about the fact that yes I practice no I don't practice law I am an attorney that's right I'm a private attorney. Okay? Just that simple. Wait a minute. How can you be a private attorney? Well, okay, first of all, we need to understand this. Whether the practice of law is a right or privilege, it need not be determined. It is a matter, uh, it is not a matter of state grace. This was actually heard in the uh, Aaron's case versus the Supreme Court and in the Swear case. Okay, they said it is not a matter which a state can license because the courts have not heard that argument yet now this is the unrebutted unrefuted allegations you can find this document on the legal readers commission dot com forward slash pdf i mean dot org forward slash pdf sorry dot com is coming up soon we're getting ready to load up a bunch of documents and pdfs that we haven't loaded up on our site in addition to the pdfs on the readers right dot org site Okay, these are presumptions, not presumptions, but um, what is that thing I'm trying to think? Oh, unrebutted. Unrebutted affidavits. That's why everything you do is an affidavit. Oh, sorry, let's do that now. Because we did say everything you do is an affidavit. Hey, somebody just let it go, okay? Affidavit, comma, declaration, comma, decree, comma, Acknowledgement. All caps that? Both that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dragon Naturally Speaking. And Dragon Naturally Speaking literally works like Windows. Uh, oh no, sorry. My cat is deciding that she go keep going keep going keep going all right got the broom all right no I didn't hit her she understands what keep going means it means go under the sofa leave me alone right now and daddy's working that's what that means all right but this well you got the creed twice <clears throat> look don't worry about what we got twice or a hundred times. <clears throat> got something in my throat. Let me clear my throat. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this is the document I'm working on. And when I thought about it last night, bringing up all of the arguments and all of the stuff that we know today, we are going to rebut presumptions, rebut presumptions, rebut presumptions. And we're going to state things that we know that cannot be refuted. And we're going to put it in affidavit form so that an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth. Okay. Uh, this is a case where... I, it's my first time reading this. It says, Gilbert also relies on Swear versus the Board of Examiners for the proposition that a state cannot exclude a person from the practice of law for the reason that... 
contravene the due that contravene the due process clause. Swear held that a former membership in the Communist Party and an arrest record relating to the union activities could not be the basis for completely excluding a person from the practice of law. Okay, don't need to read that any further because it was not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on right now. Let's see. I'm, I'm looking for a particular case law. I should have had it here. But we want to, okay, to respond in this action is a non-lawyer moving forward in proper, in proper persona. Uh, no, members of a group, that's what I'm looking for. It's right in front of us. I should have read NAACP versus Button, okay, because that's the case I've been highlighting. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're doing. Members of groups who are competent non-lawyers can assist other members of the group achieve the goals of the group in court without being charged with unauthorized practice of law. <gasps> That's what we're doing. You don't believe me? Litigants may be assisted by unlicensed lawyers during judicial proceedings. <gasps> Brotherhood of Trayman versus Virginia x -Rail. Virginia State Bar, and then Gideon versus Wainwright. And then here's another. Federal law and the Supreme Court cases apply to state court cases. So we can go in state and federal and still stick with the federal law. Now we could act as the next friend for people because we're going to be speaking on behalf of the uh, what do you call that? That straw person who's incompetent. And because the straw person is incompetent, a next friend can come in and represent that person. Incompetent person do not have a duly appointed representative. He may sue by his next friend or by a guardian at Linum. These are the laws. Okay? That's what we're going under. Those are the ones. Well, are you think you can be successful using that? Why not? There have been so many cases that have been heard and have been sealed because people brought forth the right arguments now we're going in under the seventh amendment well what do you mean you're going in under the seventh amendment i thought the court said that the constitution didn't apply to you because you were not a party to it really because pay attention I want y'all to pay attention now I declare that I am a party to the United States of North America Constitution of 1789, period. I declare that I am not a party to any of the acts of Congress. The United States capitalize that I declare that I am not a party or subject to any of the laws comma codes comma acts laws capitalize that comma Code Capitalize that Capitalize that Comma Statutes Capitalize that And or articles issued by the many legislators comma and congressional bodies period as I am a I had to stop right there because I want to say a sovereign but remember sovereigns have been declared what 
Are you ready? Are you ready? Terrorists. So notice what we're going to put. Non-citizen national. All caps that. Comma. Native American. All caps that. Capitalize that. Comma. Born. A real person man comma am of competent age comma and completely equipped to handle my own affairs period I declare that I have not been lost at sea, comma, that I am not at this present time lost at sea, comma, and that I shall never be construed, comma, considered, comma, and or conjured to be lost at sea, period. I further declare that I am it's not that I don't know where else I'm going I know exactly where I'm going with this but do you see what's happening you see when they say that we're not party to something then they produce the presumption so we're gonna head them off at the pass with the presumptions Okay, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to declare, and let's do it now, and presume ladies and gentlemen, and I'll finish adding everything else in here, but I want you to understand, what am I doing here? Not only am I killing presumptions, not only am I doing a declaration of executorship, but I'm also including everything else, including the all U.S. corps, where we're challenging their right to be a debt collector, and we state that we're the creditor. Oh, you're going to do the secure party creditor stuff. I am saying that you don't have to do a UCC-1 to be a secure party creditor. Where was the UCC-1 in 1852? Where was the UCC-1 in 1542? Where was the UCC-1 in 1382? Where was the UCC-1 in 1242 BC? Or excuse me, AD. Where, where was it? Okay, so let me explain something to you. That UCC thing, that code wasn't introduced until the 1900s. The mid-1900s at that. Do you get it? So prior to the code, what did people have to do? Place it on the public record. You remember watching the TV shows where the sheriff or somebody would come and they'd nail something to the post or they nail something to the door of the tavern? And everybody would come and look and see what was being nailed up? They weren't being nosy. They were trying to make sure it wasn't something with their name on it or with their property so that they could rebut it, so that they could challenge it, so that they could say, oh no, uh-uh, you ain't getting away with that, uh-uh, and I challenge that right here now. Let's go to court. That's what that was about. So ladies and gentlemen, this is all about putting things on the public record. And I, it wasn't until this very moment, right now, that I realized what I did right, because I've been trying to figure out what have I done that was right? Somebody asked me earlier tonight when I answered that call, one of the questions were, where should we file our documents? One of the main questions I get from people is, where should we file this? With everybody, the presiding judge of the serious, uh, excuse me, speaking too fast, the superior court in your area. What's the superior court? We have court of commons. No, it's called the county court. You, per you file it with the presiding judge of the county court. Send it registered mail. I know for some of you it's going to cost you $120 sending registered mail to all these places. I don't care. It's not my problem. Do it right. I sent mine certified, but I sent mine several times. 
Okay, so if you're going to send it certified, let me tell you a way to get around a certified to make it registered. Okay? To make it count, it's mail. See, certified is not mail. But if you have them put postage stamps on there instead of the metered mail stamp, it now counts as mail. So if you can't afford the certification, I mean, not certification, but the... Uh, the registered mail, you know, they would not let me do registered mail and certified mail at the same time. And I did not pick up on that last week when I did that. I went to the post office and I, I forgot because I had an envelope with already the certified mail label on it. And I put my registered mail label on it. And they told me, no, you can't. It has to be one or the other. And so I had to rip off the certified mail. Ladies and gentlemen, even they know that certified mail is not mail. It's inner office correspondence. And you can't mix the two. Man, I didn't even think about that. Oh, by the way, this is the same two that I talked about. Uh, Mr. Wilton, I think his name is. This is another one of the songs. Oh, this is a song I said we were going to come back to. No? I know how you feel. I got it up here twice. Okay, there's two versions. One of them is 5 minutes and 24. Okay, there's two versions. So the first one that I played is the one on, that's going to be on the site from now on. Uh, we'll be adding new information to the site, including this document here. Okay, I should have this done by Thursday. I know that I'm not going to have it done tonight because I'm tired. But I'm in a much, can you tell that I'm in a much better mood? Walmart, <laughs> wonderful company, is holding on to $300. I tried to get them put the three hundred dollars I have at Walmart. I tried to get it put on a gift card, a no money card, you know, like the prepaid cards. And every time I put the order through, they cancel it. After the order is put through, they cancel it. Been trying to get this done since August. You know, they hung up on me today when I called to complain about that and said I had enough. And one guy, one of their operators, just said, "I don't care." told me well fine you do whatever you want to do that's all right whatever you want to do and just said oh really you think I got an attitude <laughs> you ain't seen nothing that was the way he talked to me I said okay it's just I just need to make sure that while I'm recording this call it doesn't matter do whatever you want like he didn't care so I'm letting Walmart give them one other opportunity one more gotta be in good faith gotta act in good faith in good faith, got to act in good faith. I'm going to take them for, no, nah, might as well be $3.6 million. So I, I mean, because it's all credit. So I'm going to do them $3.6 million in United States recognized credits. U.S. dollars. And I'm going to see whether or not his attitude, because I get to play that because I told him we were recording it. So now I get to play that to the court to let them see the type of customer service. And I ask for a jury trial, of course. And I go to the federal court and I get everybody's attention here in Puerto Rico. And I let them know that I'm tired. No more games. Oh, by the way, that's my money. My, my, my credits. My, my legal tender that Walmart's holding on to. And they act like they have a right. The same as with Western Union. They act like they have a right. I just had one person tell me that Western Union still hasn't refunded the monies that they were using for the seminar back to them. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this, because when I told those people that they could keep the money, they've been still trying to give it to me. Uh, one guy said a worker is deserving of his hire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you, this morning, no, yesterday, I had $2 left on my so-called debit card. Two dollars because I spent a lot of money sending out registered mails for the mortgages. Well, they are put first ahead of me. But then one person heard about the plight I was having with Walmart, and we were thinking that the package was still on the way, so they advanced me the money. And now the money's not coming. And now I feel very, very bad. Okay? So now I gotta make sure Walmart understands. Even if they give the money, it's over. Because now I'm going to break my neck to break their neck. The same thing with Western Union. They had an opportunity. I've acted in honor and I stayed in honor and I will stay in honor throughout all of this. 
in Puerto Rico the argument is right now let me see no it's not on this computer so I can't pull it up on this computer but the argument is this the Constitution was written in English the laws of the United States was written in English the courts rules were written in English go ahead and look at the federal court rules written in English so the proceedings will proceed in English and they will accept my pleadings excuse me wrong word wrong word I apologize to all of you my presentments in English or they can kiss my grits okay so hey Teddy Pendergrass takes your way back huh you know go ahead and tell him Teddy and when you got the whole town laughing at you it's a shame alright we're gonna let Teddy take us on out of here I wanna thank y'all for visiting us this was just a short video we're gonna be talking about this decree and the act of providence now I like the word providence but let's let's see what the word providence really means okay are, are y'all with me before we end this let's do some oh no not that searching let's do some ebook searching because the first window that's gonna pop up is Google and we're tethering so this computer I don't have all of the windows up and everything for my uh, operas and all of that and I'm hoping to have that up soon bookmarks and transfers and all of that and having to relook them up and I will get this stupid Google to open up on my last views let's look uh, Providence let's look legal let's see G A L legal D E F Let's just hit enter. We don't have to put of. Y'all don't think we have to put of in there, do you? Of. I hit enter, but you see, that's not spinning. This is not spinning. What's wrong with legal providence? Let's go. Legal definition. Well, something's happening because I can't click on here. Y'all see this? I'm clicking, but it ain't doing. <gasps> there it is. Legal definition of providence. It's an online dic dictionary. It's a pronunciation of providence, translation of providence. I want the definition of providence, you idiots. Sorry. Act of providence, legal law and legal definition. Act of providence is an accident against which ordinary skills and foresight could not guard. No, I don't want an act of providence. <sighs> no, not what I'm looking for. Divine guidance or care. B, capitalized. God conceived. Divine providence. Oh, an act of providence. I see why they say that. It's an act of God. Okay. The concurrent meaning of the word derives from the sense of knowledge of interesting I like that providence of God for knowledge benefit uh, beneficent care and governance over providence over the see I knew I came up with a good word and yes I just thought of the word I needed a word that fit there I wanted to do active state but I needed a better word than state interesting so let's take that definition declaration of providence beforehand and a decree of entitlements I think that I think I'm I'm satisfied with that y'all aren't y'all I know y'all is cuz I is and then what we gonna do oh baby what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something a little different because we're gonna still make this like the declaration of executorship so let's see we're in a new folder
Ladies and gentlemen, there was a a young lady who called me. I need the one for the web, so that's the one I'm looking for. There was a young lady. She didn't call me. Sorry, I apologize for that. No. I'm looking for the recent declaration. I said Teddy was going to take it take us out of here. I got to make sure. Okay, this is the web. This is an old one. Okay. This is what I want right here. Right here. This is Oh, stop it now. This is what I want. And we're going to take some of the other wording out of here and put into here. But for right now, this is what I want. Right cheer. Okay. We're going to move this stuff over. Okay. So that everybody know what goes where. Yes, this is the document that I woke up this morning and this was the idea that I had and I kind of like I'm proud of it. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I'm trying to do this. Okay. Okay, now let's do one more thing. We're going to lower this picture because you don't need to be that big. Because your driver's license picture isn't that big, is it? Okay, so this is just to let you know. We're going to try to do this this way without hindrance, without headaches, without stupidity. Let's see, where are we? That's what I want. Y'all see what I'm doing right here? We're conserving space. We're putting all the same information in there. You're still going to do the same thing. Declaration of Providence. And then we're going to add the other information in. So I want you to bear with me. My hope is to have this up by Thursday. Okay? But I'm... I tell you, when I came up with the idea, it solidifies everything. So let's get back to who you send it to presiding judge of the county court which is going to be like a superior court or the largest court in the county so you just what's the what's the uh, highest court in the county just go and ask city hall that they'll tell you okay then you want to send it to the supreme court of your state to the presiding judge then you want to send it to the presiding judge of the federal district court and then you want to send it to the presiding judge of the circuit, federal circuit court. Then you want to send it to Washington, D.C., to Hillary Clinton's office, the secretary of state's office, or the state office. Then you want to send it to your secretary of state's office. Actually, send it to the governor directly. Okay? Send it to the governor directly. Might as well put them on a the hook. And then, who else do you send it to? Federal Reserve. Okay. You can also, and if I were you, I would think about this very, very strongly. The Attorney General for the United States of North America. And we're going to put in here that they are to notify their superiors of your standing and of your decree and your will. Do you see what I'm saying? So you, you don't have to worry about missing someone in the tier of who you send things to. Okay, now, of course, because this is an affidavit, we're going to put down here that you are this, you are that, you are this, you are that, and it's going to be the same thing as... We're going to put the peace treaty and stuff in there because it is an act of state that you're doing. 
uh, Brett Cenovizzi of the family of Jones of the town of Vigiti, New Mexico, the household of blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're going to do this stuff, but we're not going to make it so bulky, and it's only going to be mentioned once. There's no reason to mention twice. So it says, appearing personally before me, the undersigned, on this 14th day of March. Okay, that's what we're going to be putting. Condensing it. Okay, you follow me? All right, we're going to go for, like I said, three and a half to four pages only. And that's including the Gerard. So just want you all to stay tuned. We're going to try to get this thing done. And we're going to try to get it out to all of you. Okay, I do have some other people that will be working on it with me. So when I say I hope to get it out by Thursday, it's if they're proofreading and they're going over it and their additions are done by Thursday. You get me? You got me? Good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you like the new twist of the music that we're adding to the videos. And we'll be adding some other singers uh, right now. It's just those three. Well, those four, because the one group, there's two of them. And then you got Teddy Pendergrass and Marvin Gaye. Uh, but we'll be adding some Patti LaBelle's and some uh, my girl Beth Midler and... Uh, what's that other one? Uh, Rhymes. Is her first name Leanne Rhymes? I got a lot of Leanne Rhymes on here, so we're going to be adding some Leannes and, you know, so on and so forth. Maybe, maybe some Elton John and some George Michaels. George Michaels most definitely. But we're going to spin it and twist it and bring you guys something that, while I'm talking, there is something that will serve as a tone setting the tone for the conversation now many of you well the music is so distracting I just can't I don't know what to do uh, ladies and gentlemen you walk into supermarkets all the time and there's music playing you drive your automobile or operate your automobile or cruise or travel in your automobile all the time with music you have conversations all the time with music or something playing in the background or something else going on. If you're going to tell me that you talk on the phone while the TV's going and you're able to do that, then you're able to handle the music in the background on these videos. By the way, if you talk on the phone while the TV is going, that is very disrespectful. You should be giving your full attention to the person who's calling you on the phone or whom you called. But to talk on the phone and to have the TV on where that TV conversation can be heard and while the person is talking you're laughing or chuckling or going <gasps> that is disrespectful there is a matter of fact there is no way to announce how disrespectful that is for you to do a person like that the reason why I can say that is because I permitted and allowed someone to do that to me and I can say it with certainty I permitted it I allowed it and I regret it to this day and I will never do it again because I let people know now today this very day I tell them oh no either you turn that TV down or off or this conversation is over don't hear nothing else after that because it's just the way it is respect begets respect so again our document will not say anything about documents it will be a presentation and we will do nothing with their legalese words we will explain that this is not left to any interpretation it says what it says and it means exactly what it says well what if don't worry about the what ifs you are the king or queen no as a matter of fact you young ladies I don't want you to be queens forget that a queen has no power what do you mean a queen has no power? Because if you understood anything about royalty, if you understood anything about royalty, the queen has no power. It is the king that has the power. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we come to this conclusion of this video and we say thank you for allowing us to come into your living rooms and we will get back to our business. And we'll let you get back to your business. ReadersWrite.org, ReadersWrite.com, Redress.Write on Skype, and YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash Redress, Redress Write. 
we'll come back to this song later. Take care. Okay, you men. Be quiet. They're right there. Oh, they know they're here. It's okay. Redress. Oh, oh, did you hear something? None of this material is copywritten. Feel free to use it as you please. Pretty good, wasn't it? 